Well, hello everyone. Just coming back here to discuss um, a few things. Had some questions about uh, Action PC and some of the folders that I've used in the game as far as pictures that I've brought in and you know how I'm arranging that, and how I'm creating pictures. So I thought, well, let's fire up the game and let me explain that. So let me launch the game. And my point of this is to highlight a little bit on the custom photos that I'm creating. I know there's many photo packs out there at the Action PC Sports community and other places where you can go and uh, download photo packs and some for specific years. So I do also want to talk a little bit about how you separate just dumping a lot of pictures into your main um, player photo um, folder with Action. And how do you separate that for season specific stuff. So let me highlight that right now. And one thing I can show you is if we go over to our drop my thing in here for everybody can see this. We've got you can see I can go to on my D drive is where I save it. I have my DK Sports data folder. And when I go in here you can see I have some custom folders. Some of this is for my era data that I'm going to start creating on my own and I've got some uh, custom ballpark data and different things here for me. But if you just go under baseball, this is where all of your uh, baseball stuff is stored. And you can see that I have a, a uh, folder here just for player photos. So if you click on this, this is a pretty full photo, um, photo batch here. I have a lot of the uh, pictures that I've put in here for my five-year franchise file. So what I've done with that is I'm creating photos myself using a template um click on l hiraboski here as you can see i've just taken the 1961 tops kind of template here that i originally got from uh, somebody named craveheart uh, years ago on the action forums had made some about four or five specific seasons he had done i think um uh 69 68 71 and I believe maybe 1961 itself using these templates. And I really liked it because it just, it's a very simple template to kind of mock up. And then I started making, uh, hunting down my own photos and trying to, I like more of the baseball card style, the action photos rather than just headshots. So I then decided, well, you know what, I'm going to make it specific for my teams and try to put the applicable uh, for that five-year period, um, logo and also incorporate just kind of dresses the card up so this is just added time and by all means it's a much easier process if you grab somebody's photo pack and download it but if you were to grab a photo pack from one of these sites and just download it into this folder here which is your dks player photos it just throws them all into one place okay that can make it difficult for assigning photos so for example even in my file here you'll see i've got al oliver and i've got al oliver named Al Oliver P to denote when he's with Pittsburgh because I also have an expo team with Al Oliver, right? So it can get really confusing in this league file. And I'll go into more a little bit how you can manually adjust some of these at the team page. But you can see up here that I have specific folders in the player um, photo area. These are where if you choose, say you're gonna replay the 1952 season, and if you downloaded, we click on in here, I don't have anything there yet, right? But under the rules within the game, if I was to go in there and say that I want the game to go to a specific directory, a subdirectory of this folder, this is how it would be done. So let's kind of do that. I'm going to switch my season up to, um, maybe I'll start using this nice convenient thing here that I never seem to use down here. And uh, let's go baseball 2022. So if I go into this, let it switch over. Here we go. So now I'm in the 2022 season that I had already started. If I wanted to have a photo pack that somebody make, and there is one out there on the community, I believe that's just for current 2022 photos, I would go under my rules and I would want to direct it to a specific subfolder rather than having it search through the regular player photo where everything could be, right? So if I go under general, oh, hold on, maybe it's info. Yeah, info. 
you can see it has my league name, but right here in this area is called Locate Player Photos and Subfolder. So if I click on this, okay, I'm going to hit Save. Now, when I go back, let's pull up, uh, let's go back in there. It's my ballpark, so I was messing with earlier. Let's go into Player Photos. Now, if we go into my player photos, you'll see that I've just created a brand new subfolder for this season. Um, disregard this date. I just kind of put a date on the file so I know when I was using it. But if I click on it, now there's nothing in there. Now, if I go to the Action PC Sports community, I can then download their photo pack. And this is the folder. Whoops, closed it by mistake. This right here is the photo. Um, is the location where I would want to dump those photos, not dump them into my main player photos directory. So hopefully this explains, I know there's a lot of questions sometimes where how do you use the subfolders? Subfolders is great because then if you, you can get yearly specific packs, you know, when players change teams and have different uniforms or uh, caps or whatever, and you can have a folder for each season you play. Same thing is true if you have a draft league, right? And you're bringing in, um, teams. So let me kind of explain. I've just created some for a couple of new teams on my file, and I'll show you how I assign them because I'm not taking a simple approach yet. So let me go back to my five-year file because I'm using these custom photos I've created. A lot of people have asked if they can get them. Unfortunately, I, don't, I haven't got them in a complete state yet to make them available. My goal is to make them available to a company, my five-year file, because they're very specific to the team rosters on that project. So let me go to my AL file. And the reason I say that is I'm creating teams based on that five-year run. So let's go in here. Just created a new team here uh, recently, the uh, Mark Fidrich Tiger era team, 76 to 80. And you'll notice that uh, I did this yesterday. I went and got my updated photos form and brought them into the game. So what I have to be aware of here with mine is, you know, Jack Billingham, for example, you can see he's here um, on the Tiger team, but he also is on the Reds team. Um, how do I account for that? Well, this is how I do it. So if we go up here under the roster tools, we have player photos, nicknames, and uniforms. I go here. You'll see that you, I use this format, which is first name, underscore, last name, right? You can set up your pictures however, but this is the one I create them in. But you'll notice if I click on here and go player by player, it brings up logical um, uh, sorting for me to help. So you'll notice here I have Fernando Arroyo. It will default to the one name Fernando Arroyo, but I could click on I, I when I have multiple options, which I just really enjoy having multiple options to just select. I can go, here's my second option for him. Here's the third. If I want to use that, I just say, use that photo. I'm going to switch it over to this one. Jack Billingham, you'll notice when I scroll through, you're seeing that I have Jack Billingham. Regular is defaulted to the reds, two, three, four, five. But then if I scroll down, when I saved it, I had, I can't name it the same. I had to give it a D. So what my naming convention is, with some of these players that played on multiple team, like Reggie Jackson, that are on my file, I, I then have to pay attention and realize, ooh, Jack Billingham, he already exists. So before I copy my photos over, and I'm going to show an example of how I go about doing this. So if you find yourself in the same boat, hope it helps. But now I've got D. This is just, I've used it. So now it's Jack Billingham, Detroit, and I can go through here and say, oh, I've got a few options for him. Huh, I think I'm going to use this one. Boom. So I can pick that one, use that photo. So this isn't as hard as some people think. So if you find that sometimes you're, it's not sticking and you can't figure out which one to use, one thing to look for here is I save all mine in JPEG. If you have a PNG, I don't believe the game will recognize it. In fact, I'm pretty darn sure it won't. Uh, I think BMPs and GIFs, maybe they will. But tried and true, I stick to JPEG format. That way they'll show up. So here's Mark Fidrich. You'll notice it defaults to this first picture, but I, I've got a couple options that I've chosen here and I've renamed them. Here's another photo. I could choose that one. Um, I think I got one of, hey, here's one of Mark Fidrich, uh, you know, groom in the mound, typical Mark Fidrich fashion. I could choose that one and I just say, hey, 
use that one for Mark Fidrich, right? So change that one back. Kind of like this one. So when I get bored with it, I can come through here and change it up, right? Kind of fun. So you can see uh, uh, another thing I've run into that's interesting because I'm trying to get so unique with the five-year files is I've got Kurt Gibson on my 83 to 87 Tiger team. And if you notice, the only difference is if you'll see this, their logo changed and they were using the old English D. Where from the late 60s through the uh, mid to late 70s, they're using this Tiger kind of logo. So to keep consistent, as you notice, I'm using that. I just went and kind of made other iterations of players like um, Gibson is going to be on both. So you'll see Gibson here with photos with that D so that I can use him on the 83 to 87. And then I've got some other options down here, higher numbered, where I picked a few so that if I want to see this logo, I've got a couple Gibson pictures here that I can use for that. So it does, it can be tedious when you have multiple pictures or if you've designated um, players that appeared on different teams, right? You're going to have to denote them with a different name. So I just, I'll find out if I've already got one built for like uh, Jack Billingham for the Reds, then I'm okay. Jack Billingham D, Jack Billingham D1, D2. And that way, when I go through it, it's easy for me to go pick the one for that team, right? Um, see what else we've got in here. So I've just added these photos. Again, I am a fan of uh, the flexibility that the Action PC games give. I, I think having photos and uniforms and all the good stuff and the ballpark images and the chalkboard really dress up the game experience. So for me, it's worth spending the time to do these. My goal is once all of these sets are done to make them available. However, I keep adding more and more teams to this five-year file. So now I've got to spend some time and catch up and get the photo packs done because they can be a little time consuming. So I'm going to play a game between an, this Tiger team and I'm going to play them at a team that I built recently as well, which is the early White Sox. OK, I have not added photos of the White Sox players, but let's let me show you what you'll notice here. This is already tipping me off that I know I'm going to need a White Sox picture of Bonson, Cott, Gossage and some other players that I've already created photos for on another team. So what I do to help me is I can come back in here, roster tools, go to player photos, uniform and nicknames. I can hit. Format I'm going to use is first underscore last. I hit default, right? And this is where I can make a note because now I can click on it and I know these players don't have a picture in my file yet. I know Dick Allen does. You know what? I've got him with the Phillies. Okay. So I can go over and see all these Dick Allen photos I have. So now I can make a note that, okay, when I bring Dick Allen for the White Sox over into this, I'm going to have to give him some kind of a marker. I'm going to have to put Dick underscore Allen C for Chicago, right? And then C1 to denote him from the Philly one. So you can see I've gone through here, Stan Bonson. I have him with the Expo, so I'm going to have to call him out. Bucky Dent's on the Yankees, so I'm going to need to differentiate him. So there's many others here. Rich Goshage is the same way. So I've gone through with some of these players and already noted that. So close that out and show you how I go about this. It's this easy. I'm going to go into my, I have a bunch of what I call folders that I've created for every one of the teams that I've created the five years. And I have a place where I store all of their photos, right? I haven't done any for these, this early team yet here, but let's go to the Giants. So you can see here, I haven't colorized these or, or put my baseball card template on them, but this is my working doc, uh, folder for uh, the 33 to 37 Giants, right? So once I get these all in a format where I'm happy with them and I've applied my template, let me go grab the one I'm going to show you, 71 to 75 watts. I've just completed all of these. So you'll notice I followed my for naming format with the underscore, but I went back and for all the people that I knew I already had files in for, Bucky Dent is one here, Carlos May, um, find another one here, Stan Bonson. I just went back and added the C. So now when I go in there, I'll know it's Stan Bonson, C, C means Chicago. So once I've done that, I can go up here, select all, 
um, I make a copy. I right click and copy all these photos. I go to my D drive is where I keep have my main DK Sports data. I open it up. I click on baseball. And then I go to player photos. And again, I'm just dropping all of these into the main game folder. I may create my own folder for the five-year franchise. But right now, these are really the only photos I have. So they're not competing for other types of photo formats for different leagues. So I'm dumping all of mine into the main folder. But I could just as easily put them in their own specific subfolder. So then I'm just going to find an open space here, right click, and hit paste. And now it's going to tell me, hey, we've already got 10 with the same name. So I'm going to make sure I didn't make a mistake. And I'm going to say, let me decide for each. And I'm going to look. And you'll see I had some old pictures in here that are similar. But with some of these, you'll notice, uh, like, here's Dick Allen. It's telling me I have not given him a C. Right? And Rich Goshage needs a C, so I've made a mistake. So I'm going to hit cancel. So those that were in conflict, that tells me, oops, I had a, I don't want to overwrite them. Let me go back to my folder, and I look back up here, and I've got uh, Dick Allen. Yep, he needs a C. So all I do is I just rename here. And I just drop in a C. So I hit rename. Um, I find it's easier to sort if I put the C at the end of his name and before the number rather than putting Dick Allen 3C. Just uh, anything you want to do. It's just my preference. There we go. Got Dick Allen. I've got five options of him. Again, I, I don't have to do all these, but I enjoy the baseball card style of creating these. So. I enjoy having like several options for the players and different photos. So we've got him. Rich Gosses, which is another one that I already had in there. Oh, can't find him. Oh, here he is. So Rich Gosh, it's going to go in here again. Give him a C. Just this easy. Give him a C. Rename. Okay. Now, all those other pictures carried over, so I could just select the four Gossages and the five Allens and drop them over. But if we went ahead and select it all again, just hit copy, go to player photos, find an open space, right click and hit paste. Now it's telling me, oh, 121. I'm going to say replace all the files in the destination. I could have just picked those nine individual and dropped them in. We can overwrite the ones that made their way through and are good. You could see right here that um, they've carried over. So now I can go in, fire the game up, and get my 71 to 75 White Sox team set up with photos. And then I'm going to fire them up in a game at Comiskey because I've also added a couple parks to Comiskey that I want to look at. Um, great. So I'm going to go to rosters. I'm going to select 71 to 75. Uh, I'm going to go up here to roster tools and open up my photo manipulator here where I can assign them. I'm going to hit that. I want to use default for first name, comma, last, hit default. Photos have been set. And now when I click on them, it will automatically go to Psi underscore Acosta. Again, I can pick other photos if I like. Maybe I want this one. I like that one better. But now you'll see Dick Allen is still showing for the Phillies, right? Because it's going to default to Dick underscore Allen. But now I have the C option. So I can come through here and easily, ooh, which one do I want? I like this one. There's Dick Allen. Uh, Luis Alvarado. So what I find is I, I'll come through here and it, literally takes a couple minutes to set up a team. Not that difficult at all, right? Stan Bonson, here's one I know I've got to go and find an option here for him. Just grab a photo. Buddy Bradford, some of these I'm just going to take the Bucky Dent. What do I got for Bucky Dent here? All right, let's get a, uh, maybe I want more of an action photo. Just grab that. Brian Downing. 
and I'm making sure that something isn't throwing it off, right? So I've got Terry Forster. Here I've got Terry Forster with Atlanta. Now I've got Terry Forster options with Chicago. Rich Gossage, get Chicago in here. Yeah, so hopefully this is kind of helpful. I know there may be some people far more experienced with me out there. Um, okay. Jerry Hairston, I didn't change it because I've got Jerry Hairston, if you'll notice, on an older White Sox. So sometimes I'll just add a different, a higher number here because he, he's playing for him early and late. And I'll get something that's a little bit more time specific for him here. Matches everything with the logo. Henderson, who's also with uh, Van Herman, Bart Johnson. Oh, Jay Johnstone, yep. Get a photo for him. Jim Cat, I've got some different options for him for Chicago. And sometimes I'm like, yeah, which one do I want to use? Oh, here's one. Now, this is a great tip. So now I can go back and see that Jim Cat, uh, this first one here, is a GIF. And it's not showing it. So it's letting me know that when I click on that, it's not going to display it. So GIFs probably aren't workable. Maybe it's BMPs and JPEGs. So that's a cue to me to go back in. And I can go back over here to where I keep those player photos. And the Jim Cat C. Where is he at? Right here. I'll open it in my uh, snap. I use uh, Snagit to do a lot of my templates and manipulation and different things like that. And you can see, here's my snag, it opens up. And then I will just, I will go to save as. And when I go to save as, you can see, oh, it's in a PNG format. Now I can change it over here to um, JPEG, save it. And now when I go here, I should see two of those. So here I got Jim Cat right here. If I hover over, it's telling me this is the GIF. This is JPEG. So I'm going to get rid of that one, delete it. I want to right click and copy this. Go over to my uh, player photos. I'm going to paste it. It should go to right where Jim Cat's at here in a minute. I got a lot of pictures in here to go through. Well, I say it should, but we'll see now. Let me go up and find it. Go up to the J's. Already got a ton of pictures in here. So let's go find Jim Cat. And here we go. So I got two gym cats. I got this one right here. I'm going to look at the first one. That's the GIF file. Make that go away. Now I've got the one that I want to use. So let's go back in here to photos. I think I'm going to have to, sometimes once you've added new stuff in there for it to go and read it, I might exit the game, so I'm going to do that. Exit the game. I'm going to fire it up. And let's go in and look at those White Sox. So it's a little bit of a tedious process, the way I'm doing it and how I'm bringing my stuff in. If you're dropping a photo pack in for a season and you've created your subfolder, it's pretty quick, right? But you still may find that you've got to come back here and double check if your photos are sticking, right? And sometimes some of the things that will make a photo not stick will be too long of a name. I don't know how long, but I know if it's really a long naming format you have, it won't stick. And if you're using, I guess, GIFs and other things and PNGs that aren't JPEG. So I love JPEGs. I keep clicking on the wrong box here. Roster tools, player photos names, right? So now let's go back. Let's let it click on the it loads the player photos. So now if we go to Jim Cat, 
now I have that one that I couldn't get. Now it's a JPEG. Now it shows up. I kind of like that. A little more of an action photo. I'm going to pick that one for Jim, Jim Cat C for that. Got it. Steve Keeley, Pat Kelly. Uh, Pat Kelly's there for Baltimore. So I'm going to go in and pick another Pat Kelly photo. Carlos May. I know he's one I got to worry about. So let's pick his photo. Um, got me some other George Orta photos here. So I'm going to do this one for George Orta. Rick Reithart, Lee Richard, Bill Sharp, Bill Stein, Walt Williams, Wilbur Wood. Um, so now that I've got them all assigned, um, I'm choosing to display them. You could click displayers, um, display all players here. You could click off photos if you don't want to see photos. I think it's pretty cool. So I click photos on so you can see it in the roster screen. You flip back and forth. Um, but that's just a little tip that I've learned on, you know, doesn't take that long to go in. Once you can get off, make sure that you've got unique naming for your players. If you've got players that are on different teams and they're not sticking, using this tool right here to go into roster tools and take a peek and see which ones aren't and try to investigate, right? But the game does a good job when I hit on Bucky Dent. This is one of the additions, several editions ago they did that's just wonderful right here, right? Because I, I can see now, I can scroll available photos I have of him, suggested photos. I mean, this just really helps you. You're not having to sort through thousands of photos and scroll down. That would be horrible, right? So this really helps that. So now I've got photos set up. You'll see also that I've selected the uh, specific um, logo. And um, I don't know where I got these from the community, but I really like these where it's got the hat and the uniform home and away. So now I've got those set up. Let's see, I've got Detroit set up. And now let's play a game. Let's go see what this looks like in the game to make sure everything's operating. So I'm gonna set up an exhibition game. Click exhibition. I wanna try these Comiskey Park um, photos that I've been looking at, so we'll put those, that White Sox team to home, and I'll pick uh, this Fidrich team, which is going to be fun to play with. Now let's put it in the summer. Let's go to play. Um, I'll let Chicago go with the computer. Detroit can go human. And let's hold on a second. This is making me wonder. Your opponent, I'm going up against Wood, computer versus lefty. Uh, let's just roll with that. Oh, I'm going to need a starting pitcher. Let's bring in Mark Fidrich. Got it. Here we are in the game, ready to play. Now I can check this park because sometimes the parks will determine whether you want to shrink things down. This looks like a, this is the main one that uh, I've downloaded for Comiskey. If things look off. Again, I can get my park layout here and maybe move uh, Wilbur Wood in a little bit closer here. Let's see how that looks to the mound. But yeah, here's the setup. We go to preferences. I think I've got it changed. Yep. Chicago will be the human team. So got LaFleur up. It's like a lead off fly out to left field. But as you can see, this does a good job of dressing up um, the game. Uh, it's displaying up here. I've got the uniforms. It just looks nice, right? I enjoy this. I can also make these um, photos a little bit bigger if I wanted to. Um, or smaller. Same thing with the on-field photos of the players. Uh, the other thing I wanted to check out is changing a park image. Um, I've got a night park image. So if I go over to that, we can see I've got this set up for night. Might find a better one. It's got a little bit better resolution. 
And uh, the third one that I just added as an alternate is this one. That's a little bit more of a painting, but I kind of like this one. So I wanted to see what it looks like in the game. So here's another one we've got of uh, Comiskey. And with good luck, got a nice first inning home run with Lou Whitaker here. So, again, I'm just uh, demoing this because sometimes people are like, hey, I really like these these photos. Um, they do take quite a bit of time because, you know, it's one thing to, to capture the photo. It's another thing to build these templates. And I'm also putting, um, you know, spending the time to put their name on it and then the main position, just like you'd see on a baseball card. And then I went ahead and added that logo. So let me quick zoom this. I like testing out the zoom stuff to make sure. Let's just run this up to the seventh inning to see who what's going on here. Ah, we got a five to two lead here. So Wilbur Wood still in the game. That was a workhorse during the, the five-year uh, slice I've got in here. If we look at Wilbur Woods, um, well, it's saying I can't change it. Let's take a look at Wilbur Wood this way. You can see 46 games, 45 he started. I mean, it's just crazy numbers for um, – and he's listed at 72, but I think this slice right here would be the 71-72 slice. Um, yeah. Definitely can go the distance. And look, ha almost half the games he pitched, he went the distance anyway. So, Willie Horton, that was his last uh, 1976 here, hanging on for dear life with uh, with the Tigers. The 76 to 80 Tiger team is kind of fun because you've got the brand new influx of Jack Morris and Parrish and Gibson and Whitaker and Trammell. And then you have some of those. Um, players that came in in the mid-70s like LaFleur and Staub and Jason Thompson there as well. So, the fun team. Again, I kind of like the zoom feature now and then. I might zoom to uh, as I test things out. Let's go right to the eighth inning here. Let's see if we got anything good. Tigers up to their last at-bat. Let's see if... Uh, we can play this inning out and hold them. It's like the floor got ooh, nice double. Lou Whitaker up. We can see Wood's pitch count is up there, but it's not phasing him a bit. He's probably close to 130. I have to take a peek here. Send floor to third. Oh, yeah. Let's do it. Oh, boy. I had a 75% chance and got thrown out. So that's what it's like being cocky when you're up three. See if Fidrich can get a complete game win. Click on Fidrich's card. It's used in 1976 and 77. And you'll see that you know, he was hurt in 77. 76 was really that brilliant year he had. And then injury set in. So when I'm averaging those two years, you see he's good for 20 uh, starts right here. But look at this. He In the 20 starts, he's going to be complete 75% of the time. So... His estimated pitch count he can go is around 140-ish, depending on some of the variety that the game will throw at you. But he's only at 105, so he's pretty efficient. Let's see if he can get the win here. I guess we're going to make it a game. And while I started this to show off more of the window dressing of the game and photos, uh, let me highlight that because I am using Action 2023. And uh, why let him go the distance when I can pinch hit for him and take advantage of this wonderful matchup analysis, right? So who's coming up? I've got Melton up. So I've got righties on coming up. I can look at who I have in the bullpen. And um, let's change it from averages to the play percentage. And... Take a look at what it looks like John Hiller, even though he's a lefty, is a great reliever and looks like my best option as far as reducing hits. Um, let's 
You know what? I'm going to do that. Let's bring in John Hiller. And great managerial decision by me, it looks like. Let's see. I put my trust in Hiller. Let's see if he can get me out of this inning. Scaring me a little right now, but Kent makes the out. Long fly ball to left. Gets it into Trammell. We're down to one out. We've got Bucky Dent up, and you can see over here we've got this nice outcome box. When I click on it, it's telling me, hey, what's the getting one run, 2% chance this at-bat results in that run on first coming home. So it's kind of a neat feature, this run estimator, as well as some of the other outcome box here. But Let's let Hiller do his job. And he promptly gives up a hit to Bucky Dent. And now we've got uh, the go-ahead run at the plate. So I got Egan up. I like, I like the outcome box to keep my pitcher in. I got over a 50% chance to get a K. And that's what happened. So, hey, played a little, zoomed a little to a good point in the game, had some fun with it anyway. But here's our recap. Fun game. The other nice thing about having the uh, photos in the game is you'll see that on this uh, report right here, they're going to bring the photos in, which to me just dresses up really nice, right? So if you've got the photos there and the logos and everything, it just makes everything look better. And it does take some time acquiring them and getting them set up the way you want. It's not as complicated. Hopefully this video helps a little bit. But to me, it, it's um, a labor of love, right? It, it's worth the effort to, to get them in there because the game just looks so much fun. Or it's more fun for me, the whole experience, getting them set up that way. Um, okay, we can exit out of there. And let's see if there's anything else. I can tell, um, again, if it, some of the stuff they've asked what I've used. I'm thinking of some of the questions that have been posed to me and I am to me and left on comments in some of the videos. Again, I use Snagit. Uh, I think, let me pull up the editor. I'm using Snagit. I just upgraded to the most recent version. I've had one from like 2012 I've been using. Um, but when I go and look at stuff here, I, what I've done is I have these folders set up. I've also set up folders for each team so that I can track their logo. So if, when I say Blue Jays, I'll go in here and I've got Blue Jay. Let me take a look. We can show them. I've got Blue Jay logo. So here's my templates. I've got a Blue Jays logo left. So I'll pull it up and you can see that this has the logo. So that's ready for me to grab it. And then I can always just then go down here and start adding text on it. And I'll you know put the player's name and their position. And then I'll go and just copy this. And uh, it allows me to, um, to just take this and paste it. This whole checkered thing means it's transparent. So it lets me just place that template over any raw photos I might have. And then I can do some trimming and moving and dragging these to edit it. I'm using the resolution resolution of 240 by 336. Uh, and all the photos are pretty 99% within that range. So you know, if I go open, um, here's my white socks. If I go click on uh, Wilbur Wood here, I can go down here. Yeah, 240 by 336. That's I found, I don't know, I don't even know where that came from, right? But that's been a good size photo for the game, right? It looks good on the screens. It looks good on the player cards. I don't really need anything that's bigger um, for higher resolution or anything. So this has worked really well um, using that size 240 by 336. Um, so I'll create those templates. And some of these, again, I'll go find raw pictures out on Google. I mean, so I'm spending time searching. Um, again, take some time, may not be everybody's cup of tea to go do that, but, um, I enjoy it. I've just gotten behind on updating cards. I probably don't, may, I'd be lucky if I have 25% of the teams done. I have a lot of these teams here in the, uh, eighties done and seventies, um, very few of the early, early teams, cause the pictures are harder to find. And I'm trying to do some things to colorize them and different things like that. But you'll see. I've also gone in here and with that team, I've grabbed a manager photo for them. Um, I know I think the default is to not have an underline uh, in the naming convention, 
but I've chosen to go ahead and do that. And then when I go in and select it, I just go in to select the manager photo at the team screen and I search for it. So for example, if I'm gonna go in here and uh, take Detroit, I've got Ralph Houck there. And if I'm modifying the team and I wanna look for a manager, I don't really care what I name it. I think if you name it without the uh, line in the middle, it'll default and go finding, but I'm gonna have different versions of managers here that manage different teams on my file. So I can just go down in here and look for, uh, where is he, Ralph Houck. And I should have two because he also managed the 60s um, Yankees. I'm a little more challenged here today. Here we go. So if you'll notice, I got two options. I've got Ralph Houck Yankees that I named it. And I don't want to use that because that's the one I'm using from Yankee team. So I just did Ralph Houck Manager 2. Oh, easy. Boom. Now I'm going to sign that photo. So he's four. He's here. So it's been easy for me to kind of track them. I may take all of these and um, put them in a subfolder for my five-year file. Um, but right now, I'm just compiling them all and making sure they all have unique names on different teams in that, in that main player photo um, area. So just, you know, thought I would, you know, I was, I was doing some of this stuff today on the White Sox and catching up, and I thought, hey, maybe I've had a few questions. Maybe I should get out here and just kind of do a little walkthrough of what the subfolders mean. So hopefully this is helpful to everybody. You know, I enjoy doing these. Um, here you can see I've already got some started that I'm gonna, I need to get the templates and drop them. This is for the uh, Rangers and then maybe change some of the naming on it. Um, 62 Dodgers, if we go to the, change the view. I like to use the view where I can see the icons there. You can see I've got the 62 Dodgers here and so on. Um, I may combine some of the player pools, right? So I'm not repeating them if, it, if they have the same logos, but I've created my own problem because since I've added the logos, the Dodgers are pretty consistent throughout the years, but some of the teams we can look at, uh, I know the Tigers were using different logos. So 61 and 65 Detroit, I haven't done that team yet. That's a, a team to come with pictures, but here's a 58 and 58, 54 to 58 Reg, you'll look and you'll see Here's a Frank Robinson. I'm using that logo right there that was used for him. But if we go to the early 60s reds, because you'll notice the colors are a little bit different because they had a little bit different color scheme and a different logo. So I've changed up the templates. It creates more work for me, but I'm just, I like it. It's almost like I'm this five year file. I'm trying to accompany it with the right window dressing and player photo packs and logos. And maybe someday I'll be completely done. And then not only the file can I share with the community, but then I can also share the corresponding photo packs. The problem would be is if everybody compiled these and you're doing a season replay of actual 1961, you're going to miss some players, right? That maybe just played that year or, or didn't have two straight years. Because typically my files, I take a player's two best years during that five years. So if you were going to try to take mine and have it cover everything for you, I don't think that would work very well because you're going to miss some of the lesser known players or maybe somebody that only played um, one. Mine will be 100% spot on for my five-year file. But hey, I put them out there. They're free for anybody to use and abuse and do whatever the heck you want with them, right? It's just the way it goes. But you can see on like this one, I'm using, I've got some Pete Rose pictures I'm using that were a little bit more indicative with that uniform on it, okay? And if we go to a more current team, let me pull it up, go to the 71 or 72, 76 reds. You'll see now I've got a little bit different logo, different color scheme. I've got Rose on that team, but let's take a look at Pete Rose. I've also, so now if you go in and select photos here, uh, as you cycle through all the Pete Rose photos, you can pick one that has that logo and a little bit more representative of the uniforms of that era, things like that. I've got quite a few Pete Rose. Got a ton of Davy Concepcion, who happens to be was one of my favorite players in the 70s growing up. So I have quite a few uh, Concepcion photos that, that I can use. So anyway, just a little bit of insight into my methodology and, and 
you know, I've made this more difficult for myself because I'm trying to really do some unique things and customize. But if you went to Action PC Sports Community, looking at some of the photo packs, they have ones that have photos of every player that's ever played. And if you don't care if they have specific uniforms on for like a project you're doing, you could grab the every player that's ever played and then just drop that into this main. Let me pull it up so you can see the directory. Again, I'm just going into the DK Sports folder where it keeps all of that common stuff, clicking baseball. And then this is where you drop your ballparks. Just You could just dump them all into, into that main player photo area. And um, then if you want to get specific, you just set up your league, go to that info box that I showed you earlier, and then you can have specific folders just for that league. And then you just tell it within uh, the rules of your league where to go look for its pictures. So if you got any questions, post them. Feel free to ping me. I'm, you know, I'm uh, Steve267 on the action forum. Um, happy to um, answer any questions or whatever. And uh, it's kind of a labor of love. Just thought I'd share it. I had several people wanting to ask if they could get these photos. I don't have all the teams done. Eventually, I'll make it available. But, um, you know, if you're playing my file and, and you want um maybe a photo pack for a team, I can let you know which ones I have done and, and, and zip them and send you some of the files that um, I've already completed. If you want to check them out or see how they work in the game, or maybe you're just doing a replay and you got a favorite team and you want to know if you've got pictures for them. I will share, I keep saying I'm wrapping up and I'm going to share some more. Um, here, let's go to where I'm storing my files. Some of the earlier ones, right? I did do the Yankees. So, you know, not as many photo options there, but I, I've got a, there's some free online colorizers that are, I'm, that I'm testing out that I know they're not too bad. Right. And uh, like you can see here, it's, it's got some little photo glitch looking, but I can live with this, right? It looks better than a true black and white. Then part of me thought, well, since it's old, why not just use a vintage black and white photo? And I've got one here. I think of Hank Johnson. There's just, oh, that looks like a, bad attempt at colorization but anyway i'm just trying to make them as nice as i can and enjoyable hopefully others can can enjoy it but some of these older ones are a little bit more difficult when it comes to the pictures i found some i really like like i really like some of these of garrig right here that's a nice one um i've got some other ones of ruth up here i think this is the one that i use in the game i like this one right here um, i've done another early team i did the um uh, let me see. I think it was the Senators. 24 to 28 Senators are done. Um, got Walter Johnson right here. So anyway, get a big kick out of doing this. I enjoy them. Still a lot more to do. A lot more, especially some of these middle years, right? I don't have anything. Well, here's what I've done. I've already started doing some research. So I've gone out and found, found raw photos of the players I've ready. I just, here's a team that's ready to maybe colorize some of these that aren't color, like this one right here. And create my template and then just put it over there and size it down and, and pick it up. So for those of you that may not know, let me go over here and show you where we can find, uh, where you can find this. Got a couple, uh, shut my Discord down here. So right here, got a couple saved. One of them is Image Colorizer. So I'll give you an example. You go to imagecolorizer.com. Let's test it out. Let's test one of these. I can click or drop a file in. So let me go to those cardinals. Let's take Al Brazel right here. It's a straight black and white photo. I can drop it here and hit start. Sometimes it takes a minute or so while it colorizes. And it, trust me, if you get into this, it, it takes away time from playing the game, right? But look, it now it added the red. It figured out some red for the cardinal. So it's giving you a little bit more color than normal, right? The other thing you can do is if you want to add a little bit more enhancement, you really want to spend time, there is another colorizephoto.com where you launch a web app. And then you can take, you can see I've done some work on this one just by 
taking a model. So I, let's say I want to work off of the color that we have for Max Lanier. Pop him up right here. And then let's say I want to open something that I want to enhance. Let's say it's uh, Dick Sisler right here. Okay, so we can see now, let me pump it up. You can go over here and select the size of your area and watch what I do. I can go over here and pick red here, or better yet, red off of that cardinal. Then I can pin it down here and I can come over here and start coloring, right? And start doing this. And So here's another option. If you wanna get in and play around in this part of the hobby, you'll get lost like I did doing all this stuff. You know, same thing with the hat. You can grab this hat right here. We're going to pick on him, and now we're now we're putting some blue up there. If you can see that showing up, right? We got, uh, and then this just kind of shows you the size you can pick. I want to get a little red off of that. Now I want to put, now I'll put some red up here on his cap. Anyway, this is a good example of how you can start going crazy, add a little bit of color. Same thing with face. Say, hey, you know what? I want to get a bigger area here. Let me grab some of the face features. Now let's come over here and start coloring. I can increase the size of this. All right, and then I can just start. Does a good job of blending here. You can see this. So two things. You can really get hands-on with colorizephoto.com. This is the site I'm at now where you pick up a picture that you want to mimic and get the colors from it and then just grab it and then come over here. And start working on it. Doo, 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 doo. Having some fun here. Now, when I back up, you know, if I get it down to size, so this is already looking better, right? It didn't take me too, too long. So you just got to figure out how much do you even want care about this? Do you want to get into colorizing photos? Or can you live with the auto colorizer and what it did? And if you like that, I would just right click on it and I'm going to go save image. And uh, what am I working with the Cardinals here? And I'm just going to, I'll just name it Al Brazel. Um, let's see what I got here. Let's go with Al Brazel 3 because I've already got a 1 and a 2, right? And I'll save it. That's great. And so some of these older teams are going to take me time if I'm going to want to color everything, right? So now I've got Al Brazel 3 down here. And I don't really need 2 anymore because 3 is much better than 2. I think I can live with that. So I'll delete that. And then I've got another Al Brazel here, which is more of a face photo that I can colorize. In fact, let me colorize that. So go back to here. I can... Uh, Grab it. Let's see how it does with this face one. Hit start. Let it do its magic. I think it'll let you do five or six at once. And then to clear these, like, see, I've already done Al Brazel 2 and this Al Brazel. Now, if I go to download that, here we go. We got a little bit of red tint to the, so it's a little bit better than what I started with. So I'll just name it Al Brazel 4. Save it. Close it. And now when I go back into my Cardinals, you can see now I can get rid of these. And I'll just make this Al Brazel and Al Brazel 2. I'll just rename it. So, so now Al Brazel's done, right? I've got a couple what I would call more enhanced photos than to work with when I get my templates ready to do them. So, But you can see some of them I've got color. Some of the older ones are pretty much all black and white. Maybe some painted ones you can find. Um, but it can take a time. It's got to be a labor of love, right? But th this is some of the stuff I'm doing to create my own custom photo packs. But I think once I'm done with this, hopefully to the community, it will provide more photo options for people that care about that, right? Some people are just happy, get the face shots and go, and it's good. To me, I love these kind of photos. It's just, it's a good thing I enjoy doing it. It just takes a long time. <laughs> just, it's its own therapy, right? Like, uh, its own project. So um, that's a little bit about how I approach some of the photos, why it takes a long time, how to put them in subfolders. Again, throw some comments down if uh, there's anything you want to know. Um,
look at oh good i've got somebody that's popped in i got sports time machine um who's popped in yeah you get lost in those rabbit holes that you forget to play the game and this is very true and that's why every day now i am making myself stop and whatever i'm doing and playing a game um, i played a couple this morning um, having some fun. And that's why I thought, you know what, let me get this color uh, photo pack in and play a game and just kind of go live and see if this video would be helpful to anybody with uh, that deals with pictures. But you can see this project's turned into a big one because I think I'm up to a hundred and I can check over here for this five-year franchise file. I, I think I'm 90 teams in the AL and 88 or 87. So I, what is that? I'm getting close to 180, uh, 180 teams done, almost at 180 teams total. And I'm going to limit myself at 120 AL and 120 NL. Still a lot more to go uh, as I put in some of the not as high winning percentage teams and some of the cool ones. I had a request uh, that was great on the board to build the first five years of a franchise like with the California Angels and the Rangers and that, which is, that could be a cool project. I, to me, I may put that on its own file. Just do a five, the first five-year file for some of that. So anyway, you can see I've got, um, I had done, and some of you may have been able to find this. I think I shared it somewhere. I did a 1970s decade. And what I did is for that file, I created photo packs for all those 70s teams. And what I did then was I decided to enhance it. So if we look at the uh, Indians from the 70s, I, I had a decade. There's the there's decade um, homebrews out there that I did. You'll see that I just used the template, okay, and put the name and position for the players. Later, I got the idea, hey, why don't I take, it's stupid me, right? Why don't I take the logo and make the baseball card template look even cooler? And when I went down that rabbit hole, oh, forget it. That meant that I couldn't just easily bring these over and get a head start. I had to drop a new template on top of these. Uh, this is a good one, Oscar Gamble, man. This, these are good ones right here. Best Afro in the world back in the day. These, this was good times when they had the uh, Indians had kind of the softball looking uniforms and all that. Um, this was a fun time. Anyway little uh insight into photo madness that i get uh i get going on so now i've got all of these with the uh, appropriate logos the other thing is a pain in the butt for me is when the logos change frequently for some teams right um pittsburgh for example um i think this was pretty standard photo for a while in the 70s late 60s early 70s right um, Dodgers have been fairly consistent. Um, the Yankees, except when you go back on some of the earlier Yankees, you're going to see that before they went to this standard logo, and, and I'm using baseball uh, reference, by the way, if they had a, a variety of logos for the five years, say I choose 61 to 65, and they might have had logo switch during that i just either take the one that i'm assigning the team to or the or if they had one for three or four of the five years i might lean towards that one um let me see the early with these early yankees you'll notice that was the logo before they went to that one with the red circle trim just the ny um pittsburgh pirates have changed a ton. So I have a folder just for the franchise, different variety of logos I keep. So if I go here for pirates, you'll see all the different ones. And what I do is I'll drop these into the game to make sure I have them. But look at that. Here's the one they used in 33. So when I, when I make a small version, this is a 75 by 75 version that I use to put on my card template. So I just take the resolution I get from baseball reference, drop it in the game. Sometimes they already have a version of that um that i've acquired somewhere and then i make a 75 by 75 pixel um smaller version that i use then to add to my um card template so you can see here's some of my card templates the 90s there's here's a card template this is what i'm using that was the 90s logo right um then i've got to create a whole new one for old here's an old one when they had blue 
and red is their logo, right? Yippee, more work to do. And then you've got this pirate's logo, that typical 70s one. And then one of the things I found, another thing that causes me more problems, sometimes I grab a photo and since I'm doing action photos, the logo based on the photo may be better on the left or the right. So I have two options. I do logo left, logo right. And the reason I do that is I just don't want to cover a face or depending on the photo. It gives me options, right? It slows me down a little, but I get options. So let's go look at the um, pirates. I know they are done. 70 to 74. Those are done. But you'll notice right here, most of the time I'll use um, left. Um, here's one where I did Doc Ellis on the right, because if I do left, it, it just it didn't look as good to me. So for me, it's like, here's another one. So we've got, um, I got Bob Robertson on the right. I guess I could have gone right or left on that. Um, trying to find one where it really stands out. Like here's one. Dave Parker wouldn't have made sense to put one on the right and cover it. So I put this one on the left. I'd say probably 70% of them end up on the left, but there are just some pictures because I'm going with more action photos that kind of present problems. Um, here's some of the same games like this one, put it over on the right. This one's on the left. So anyway, gives me options, picky about stuff like that, I guess, but I would love to be done with these, make them available and let the community use them as they see fit. Again, I don't think it'll meet your needs if you're trying to get all of these and, and use it for a specific 1961, or in this case, if you were doing the 73 season, because you're going to miss some of the players that were on that 73 roster, right? Um, it's going to match up perfectly if you're using it with my franchise files, because that's exactly what I'm making these templates for. But hey, when I put them out there, feel free to use them. Ping me if you. Um, are interested in a specific team to see if I have it done and I can create a zip and uh, send you the zip pretty easy. I think I've got some zips that I've sent off to people. If I go down here and look at the zip area. Yeah, you can see I've already got some zips that I sent off to people here. Here's the zip I made that has all of the 1970s baseball photos for my um, 70s decade teams. Uh, if we click on that, that's one that I'd already pre-packaged, but you'll notice I, this was before, view them, see what I got in here. This was before I started putting uh, any of the uh, logos on the cards. So you can see there's Barry Bunnell. Um, and this had a good look to it. I just thought, oh yeah, I really created my own monster, right? Went back and added all that stuff. So if there's anything you're interested in seeing, let me know. i um, going to sign off, but um, just thought I'd share a little bit about uh, photos. My idea is to maybe pick little elements based on some of the comments and questions I get from people to figure out kind of what the next topic might be. Um, but I feel like getting on here and talking about or sharing or doing whatever. So have a good day and I will see you in the future.